Hello and welcome to the Behind the Beat podcast with me, Katie Russell from Planet Drum Music School in London. Join us as we talk to special guests and industry professionals about all things music. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Behind the Beat podcast with me, Katie Russell from the Planet Drum Music School in London. Today we are joined by one of our drum teachers, Nana. We are very excited to have her on today. Uh, I think it's going to be a really good chat. Um, So let's just go straight into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you initially got into drumming. Okay, so I am from Brazil. I've lived most of my life in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And, um, well, I started drumming that, you know, just that situation where friends were like, let's have a band, you know, and and I've always been into percussion because my dad's a percussion player. He's not um, professionally a percussion player, but he's played Brazilian music, samba, percussions um, forever, like, you know, just with friends and all. And I used to, like, I just grew up um, hanging out with my, with my parents and just... In, the, in this kind of atmosphere of, of Brazilian music and people playing. And so my dad, he kind of taught me how to play some instruments like pandeiro and uh, which is the Brazilian um, that, you know, well, I have one here actually somewhere. Um, oh, never mind. I don't know where it is right now. But anyways, he, he played the pandeiro and the yeah. tambourine, the Brazilian tambourine. And he taught me how to play those instruments, and I I loved it. I I've always loved loved playing these. And at some point, I I had some friends that wanted to have a band, and I was like, oh, I want to play drums. You know, I've uh, I think that's the best way to. I love percussion, so might as well just you know learn the drum kit. I did have a friend that had a drum kit at home, so every time I hanged out with him, I hung out with him. I would you know play drums with him. He taught me some grooves. And so I started, I was around, I was, I started late actually, you know, for the average starting age to play an instrument. I was around 17 years old. And so I, I began um, t- uh, le- learning with some teacher. I, I spent like two years with one teacher, then I moved on to another one. And then I did come to London in 2002. I did um, one year intense course, like j- j- just, you know, playing uh, at the school here and jamming and having bands. Then I went back to Brazil and I think pro- professionally, I would say that I started um, when I went back to Brazil, like started to actually, you know, uh, earn money playing drums and started playing in venues and stuff. And that was around 2004. So yeah, and then I did do college, university in, in, in music um, back back in Sao Paulo. And yeah, that, that's pretty much how it started. Amazing. Um, so you're sort of saying that you're, do you think even without your friends saying, oh, let's make a band, do you still think you would have gone down that route anyway? Like with your I dad? Do, yes, I do think because I, I really enjoyed it. And um, I was lucky enough to have, because in Brazil, the thing is of uh, the, the path that I was leading to traditionally speaking, which is like the kind of, you know, thing that happens in Brazil is that you leave school and then you you just go to the uni and you do something like you know like you know uh law school medicine school and also it was it was kind of hard to understand that I could be a drummer as a you know as a career um and uh I did I was lucky to have one teacher uh Vera Figueiredo uh who really incentivated is that is that word correct incentivated like she I don't think that's 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 an English. I don't know, word. but we, we know what you mean. I don't you know, I'm she, to Google it. She, <laughs> she she did um encourage me. Yeah. You know, she she showed me that it was possible and that I did have talent to to be a drummer and that it could be something professional. So it was very important to have her in my life at that moment. That's when I decided that I wanted to do that, you know, that I because I was going to a path where, you know, all my friends were going uh, to become a musician in Brazil. I think everywhere, really, it's not an easy decision. And I think that uh, you just kind of, um, you you lean towards doing the traditional thing, which is more guaranteed in a way, you know, like just doing some normal, uh, you know, profession and all that. So it was, it was like, it was a click, you know, like, 
okay, I think I can do this. You know, I'm, I think I'm good enough. I think I can, you know, study, practice and become a professional drummer. So that's when I came here to, to, you know, to like immerse in the drum world and learn. And, and when I went back to Brazil, I, 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 I already had that button turned on, like, yes, this is what I'm going to do, you know? Yeah. And then I focused completely on that. But I, I do think I would end up at some point doing that because it is what, you know, it's, I can't imagine myself doing anything else really, you know? Yeah. 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 It takes such courage to like make that decision when everything around you is, um, saying to go in another direction doesn't it so exactly no that's exactly. really interesting it's really inspiring as well um so tell us about some of your music projects um tell us what you've done what you've got coming up um and as well we sort of want to talk about your approach to songwriting but let's just start with sort of the music projects that you've done uh i believe you had an album out and you're working are you working on something new I am. I do have. I I I put an album out in November last year. Yeah. Um, it's called Maracujá's Dedo, which translates a uh, sour passion fruit. Um, because uh, when the pandemic happened, uh, we couldn't leave our house for a long time, and uh, a, a passion fruit tree just happened to grow in my in our backyard back in São Paulo, and it was just amazing because we all we saw all those passion fruits growing, you know. And I was like drinking passion fruit juice the whole day, and it was <laughs> it's just something that happened. That's 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 why the name. It, it was something that you know the pandemic brought, and we were like it, it something that we we hung to, you know, like yes, this is this is beautiful, you know, this is yeah. fun. Let's. Let's make the best out of this. But anyways, um, I did start the album in Sao Paulo uh, in 2020 when when everything happened. And um, it was the best excuse to, you know, that I had like, OK, you know, all the jobs, no gigs, you know, no work. I, I, I just um, decided to do this project because it was I, I, I want I was wanting to do this. But, you know, like you're a creative person, Alan, is as well. It's It's hard to find time sometimes to be in in this kind of channel you know mm. to create music you it's not something you're like you put in your schedule oh okay thursday from 2 to 4 p.m i will make music you know it, that doesn't that's not how it happens you have to have time, time to let right to have to let your you know brain kind of empty so <laughs> you can create so um it was the best thing that happened for me in the pandemic everything was chaos but then uh that's that that was my that was my uh my 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 that was my safe kind of space you know like what i i could do to be okay and happy and feel you know feel safe and so i i did move to london also in 2020 in the end of 2020 and that's when um, I finished my album and I put it out in November. And now I, my idea is to continue putting out some music. I'm starting to work on some singles. And since I'm living here, you know, I'm seeing so many amazing musicians from London. And so I would love to connect with some musicians here and, um, you know, maybe make some music with them and invite them to participate and, in these singles so that's that's what i'm aiming for right now um but yeah i uh, besides that i also write music for films and sometimes for well i did a lot for advertising as well i'm trying to do less of that not that i don't like it but <laughs> i rather do it for for you know series and and cinema and all that so I have been working with some Brazilian artists in Brazil, like directors and all. So I make some music for 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 their for their work, for their movies, and um, also I produce music for some artists. You know, still back in Brazil because that's you know that's where things still happen um, for me. I still I'm new here, so yeah, I've been working a lot for Brazil still for 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 people there for artists there. And yeah, that's basically what I've been working on, creatively speaking. <laughs> yeah, what's the sort of, can you tell us a sort of a bit about the style um, of your album that you put out last year? Um, and I'll obviously try and find it and see if I can put like a little snippet here as well. Yeah, very, very good, yeah. Meu pé 
de maracujá azedo que dá fruta todo dia de manhã e todo dia de manhã eu tomo um suco mara de maracujá azedo comprando açúcar cool so um you mean what kind of music it is yeah like what inspirations you had and like mm. can you hear them like in your music yeah so what sort of what are you pulling you know from to okay. sort of to have created that okay so well it, in it's it's interesting that this album i think it's like a product of around four years of experimenting a lot so um i did work for for a long time for 15 years um with artists you know just touring and and being a side drummer for 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 mainstream artists in brazil you know and i, I did a, so playing music their music right i did that for a long time and i felt that at some point around 2015 i thought that i needed to kind of go back to why i started playing drums you know what it, trying to connect with that feeling which funny enough is something that uh Edu Ribeiro, which is a Brazilian drummer that Alan and and I have been talking about him uh, recently. He's an amazing drummer. He's a big master in Brazil, you know, very, very, he inspires many drummers in Brazil and I think obviously throughout the world. And I met up with him once and he's, and I, I kind of like, you know, um, I, I opened my heart to him. I was like, oh, this is happening. I, I, I'm feeling disconnected with my instrument. And I want to go back to, you know, to to finding my kind of finding my uh, my statement, you know, like uh, uh, work on my statement with my instrument. And he said, well, you have to reconnect with that feeling that you had when you started playing drums. Why did you start playing drums? You know, what was your uh, goal with that? You know, and that that it's simple and it's kind of obvious. But in, in the same time, it, it really helped me um, go back to that feeling you know and so in that moment I started I, I, I spoke to another master which was his teacher in the past Lillian Carmona which is an amazing drummer she is absolutely brilliant and she is a very respected teacher so I he spoke to her I didn't I didn't know her personally and um, I, she, we, we, were, we were a bit scared of her because she has this kind of whiplash fame, you know, like mm -hmm. very, you know, like, um, like <laughs> a very strict teacher, yeah. you know. Right. And she, but he said, go to her. She's going to help you because she is the perfect person for what you need right now. And I did go to her and it was the best thing that I've that I've done in my entire career. She I spent four years having lessons with her every week and just connecting with my instrument. And she inspired me completely to make this album, you know? So um, it was it was intense for, for these years that I had lessons with her. And I, I practiced so much, like I would wake up at 6 a.m. and I would practice until, you know, 10 a.m. before I started work and every day. And it was, the best thing that I did really and with that product that that the product of of that is the album really because um when the pandemic came then I said okay now I'm just gonna create right because I was I've been practicing for a long time practicing practicing and I want to stop everything stop practicing and create music which is a different channel so I connected with well I started writing music I uh, um I have my my piano and I I work a lot with um with my DAW which is right now on the logic and sometimes Ableton Live and I just kind of create music um either I sit on the drum kit and I just you know play 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 a lot and record what I'm doing record sometimes one hour session I record the whole session on logic and then I just listen to it and and separate the bits that I that I think that, that that there's a story there you know like oh this is interesting this gave me an idea of a melody or of, of a theme or whatever you know and then I would cut these bits you know and I, and then on top of that I would create music that's usually how I work with 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 creation you know and um 
And so I, I did everything really. I like, I, I would get the drums and then I, I after obviously I, re, I, re, I re-recorded the drums, uh, the final, you know, when I had the final thing on the, on uh, like the final cut, I would re-record it like to, to make it sound, you know, uh, more glued to, to the whole idea. But then with the drum tracks, I, I usually play the bass not not the actual bass i play midi bass on the keys i am not a bass player unfortunately yeah. <laughs> but i i i have the, the the bass lines i create the bass lines and i would create the saxophone lines you know the all all the arrangements and synthesizers harmonies everything and then i send it out to, to to friends like hey i have this track i think this this um this got your this has your vibe uh, would you like to record this and usually it would be friends either that i've played with in life and that i i admire you know and i i i feel connected musically or friends that i just admire but i've never played with and i would just write them up like hi i know we're not friends but would you you know would you like to record this track and that was amazing because i had some very talented musicians that i admire um that listened to it and like yeah sure i'll do it you know and so I got together a bunch of amazing people on the record, um, Brazilians and uh, also an American guy, Jason Lindner, who recorded, he has many projects like Now Versus Now, and he recorded David Bowie's last album, Black Star. And uh, so it was really cool. Like I got a bunch of amazing people to record on the, uh, on the album and they would just from their home studio, they would record the record the saxophone or the bass or the the piano and they'd send it back to me and I just put it on the project you know do a bit of editing um and then when it was done like when every, all the ideas were there and everything was ready you know I just send it to to Maji which was the person that re, um mixed my album so yeah that was that was the work and it was completely like in a way lonely because I was in my studio I didn't have anyone there with me you know we I didn't jam with anybody it was a different way to make an album mm -hmm. but yeah. it, it was very interesting you know to work in that way and did you yeah. do any li live recordings as well like because in, on in your some of the videos you've got uh people playing together as well so wh when did that happen oh that was after so I released oh, the wow. album and yeah wow. I released the album in November right and then I went to Brazil in um I went two times to Brazil this year. The first time I got I got a band together mm -hmm. and uh, with some amazing players from Brazil. I sent them the, the the tracks and I said, let's get together when I get to Sao Paulo. We'll do a few rehearsals and let's do a video um, of us playing, you know. Um, and so we recorded three tracks in that session mm -hmm. with these musicians. And only one of those musicians that, uh, actually two, the, the trumpet player and the saxophone player, these two uh, recorded some tracks in my album. Ajanor, the piano player and the bass player did not record anything. Um, so I got them together. We did a session, well, a live session, you know, um, and I, I wanted some material to, to be able to have, you know, like some, some, some videos playing and that that's important to have as an artist, you know, to try to, you know, book shows and all that. So, I did that with them. And then when I went back to Brazil again in June, it was for a concert. I got the same band. We rehearsed more. We rehearsed for the whole the whole concert. And then we we played on on a venue there in Sao Paulo Sesky. Yeah. So that's that's what I've done with this work so far. Unfortunately, I wanted I want to do more, but you know, it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a lot of work mm -hmm. to to put the show together and hit the road. <laughs> yeah. Um so I'm really interested because obviously you're a um, you're a drummer, like you you know working musician. You're a teacher, educator. You're a composer. Like, what does your typical day look like? Does it just like vary all the time? Because like you've got so much creativity going on at the same time. Like, how do you sort of you know what what does like a typical day look like, or does it all look different? Like every day is different. I try not to make every day different because uh, I need I need some organization. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> I, uh, it's it that's the trickiest part in my life, really. You know, I think in every artist's life, maybe uh, we have to we have to pay our bills, right? So we can't spend the day like just creating, unless you're obviously you're on this place that 
you you got things going you know you're you're already like in a way established as an artist but in 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 my life what i see is that i have to have really like i have to be really disciplined so i i, I teach right at planet drums i have some some students that come over to my house and um I try to get that all in like three days. Okay, three days of teaching, whole day. And then I try to get at least two days a week that I can, you know, um, create music. It's hard though. Yeah. It, it hasn't happened. Like you, said, like you said earlier, you can't just block in the two hour window to do writing and composing. Yeah, I, I, I wish it was like that. You know, you go to the gym in the morning, come back, you know, a couple hours of creation and then, you know, go teach. It, it doesn't work like that. I need a full day. Yeah. I cannot interrupt, yeah. you know, the flow. Or the, when you get that flow going, you, you, you need you need hours, really, you know, so. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes it's like, oh, I've actually forgotten to eat or drink anything in the last five hours because you're exactly, just like yeah, completely yeah, yeah. in that zone, aren't you? Yeah. And that's amazing. When that happens, it's like, oh, I think I'm hungry. You haven't eaten in like 10 hours. That That's good. It means yeah, that yeah. you're into it, right? So um, so it's it's been tricky um I'm in this moment I'm exactly right now I've, I've been trying to organize my my schedule for that you know okay like I need two days so um yeah but that's that's the ideal because I also have we also have to manage you know practice practicing I ha I practice a lot uh, I was gonna instrument. ask when does you slot practice into there as well I know it's it's a bit of you have to put your priorities so maybe I, I've been practicing a lot for three months maybe in the next couple months I'll practice less and try to create more you know it, it has to be balanced because yeah. practicing also for me is like three hours you know I don't practice for half an hour I, I need to practice more <laughs> I'm a bit exaggerated you know but anyways um, <laughs> <laughs> everything has to be for a long time but that's the way that I get that I feel that I get my results better are we yeah. frozen are nice. we are we frozen no no nope. you froze no nope. okay. i think alan's just not moving no okay. no no I'm, I'm 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 still alive <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah i think that's so the what... tricky part yeah yeah no it's just interesting um just trying to like narrow down you know what a typical day looks like because obviously you do all these amazing creative things um so what would you say to someone or what advice would you give to um women who are interested in learning the drums because i mean at the moment you see a lot of amazing male drummers and there are amazing female drummers out there as well but it feels like at the moment there's a lot of male sort of drummers um what, what would you say to like uh, a woman who is like really interested in learning the drums or what advice would you give to someone i just say learn it learn it and um the, the way I see it is uh, there is it, it's it, it, there is much more me, many more much more men playing drums obviously it's always been like that and I where it's it's yeah um it's getting it's 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 less less and less right I mean uh if you if, yeah when but I we're think, seeing like, that with the students coming through the school it's amazing. Like there's a lot of uh, a lot of women coming through and learning drums. A lot. Most of my students are women. It's amazing, you know. Yes, which is amazing. So it's amazing, exactly. That didn't happen twenty years ago, you know. Um, and I know, I know how it is because, like, fifteen years ago, I would play in a big festival in Brazil, and with twenty bands, and I would be the only female in person playing an instrument. You know, there there were no other um instrumentalist wow. yeah and nowadays it's not like that at all if you go to a festival in brazil with 20 bands you'll it's likely you'll see a lot of female musicians so um yeah. that's changed and it's 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 progress really and at, at some point you know there will be as many women as there are men playing instruments yeah uh hopefully <laughs> i think we're 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 inclined to, to to get to that and what i would say is that um i think things you know changed it, it was hard it was weird to 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 be a woman 15 20 years ago and play an instrument you know men would be like what you know you, you're a drummer that's weird and i just always thought yeah it's weird but it's cool isn't it you know and i would 
Yeah. Now I would have that kind of auto defense, you know, I'd always be like, yeah, yeah, it's maybe it's strange, but it's really, really cool. So, you know, just deal with it, you know, and it's, it's yeah. something that, that you just kind of, I always dealt with men. I always had men around me the whole time, you know, I was, I, and I loved it. It was good, you know, and now it, I, cause people tend to say, oh, how was it to be a woman, you know, in the, in, in the year 2000 playing drums, you know, and I'd say, yeah, it was really cool. I had some amazing friends and we, you know, it's, it's all good because I think that, um, uh, I, I just think that we, as women, we we do tend to want to express ourselves a, a bit more than we'd have to if we were not women. You know what I mean? Like, so we try to like make our statement a bit harder. It's it's a bit uh, we almost like force ourselves uh, just to try to be a man in a way. You know, like just. I don't know if I'm coming out clear enough, like if I'm saying this clear mm. enough, but it's, it's funny. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's like we tend to think we're less right than less than men. And I don't know if, if it's still like that, you know, I'm 42 years old and I see that woman with, you know, 25 year old musicians. I don't think they have this posture anymore. I think it's changed, but I remember. Did my- you think that you had more to, prove if if that makes sense exactly that's that's what I'm trying to say more to prove that's exactly what 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 it is so you try to prove yourself so much and there's no point in that really you know just be yourself you know just learn the drums you know get your groove right and you know listen to a lot of music and just do your thing really if you're good you know it doesn't matter if you're a boy or girl you, you you're gonna you're going to be called to play, you know, like this master of mine that I mentioned yeah. earlier, Lilian Carmona, she's 70 years old, you know, in the 1970s, she was playing with the best musicians in the world, really, you know, she was recording with Baden Powell, which is, wow. you know, so it, 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 she, that was 1970. And she was a woman, you know, so yeah. she was good. She was called to play. She They didn't care if, she, if it was a boy or a girl or, you know, it if yeah. you're good you're gonna if you practice a lot if you study if you're a professional yeah. you're gonna get the job really and to that's, find that's, the right that's... teacher and finding the right teacher for you as well I think that's quite important yeah. that is so important I think I think that yeah I think that having the right teacher is very important because of uh, teachers are also you know they have their own history they have their own like upbringing like they're the uh, they had teachers, so their reference is whatever they had in life, you know, their teacher, where where they went to school, or what music they listened to, their approach to teaching, you know, if they're more into this or more into that. So that um, that is important if you're learning an instrument to, that was so important for me, you know, Vera Figueiredo was completely like fundamental really you know maybe I wouldn't even be a drummer if it wasn't for her I think I would but you know what I mean she's the one that said go you know she like mm-hmm. she she yeah she you know she like just do it and do it yeah yeah go and do it it's gonna be fine you know and uh Lilian Carmona was also very important to me and so um uh, I think that you gotta it, it uh if you're a beginner obviously you know you just you start to get that thing going. But when you, you start understanding what, what, what your likes are in drums and music, like, oh, I, I want, you know, I want to I wanna maybe go deeper into this or that, you know, and then you start under, like finding the best person to be with you, to teach you. Yeah. Because um, teaching is basically a coach, really, you know, like you say, look, this is really important, but then you have to go home and practice that. Or if you come, but I mean, yeah obviously there are people that go and ha- and ha- just want to have fun playing drums. They go once a week, they're like, yeah, this is the best time of my life. One hour a week, I just, you know, hit the drums and I'm happy. It's it's really good for my stress. Yes. But then there are people that really want to be a really good drummer. And so you 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 act more as a couch, like, look, you're this is really important to, to get where you want to get. You know, take this, you know, go home, practice this, come back, then we'll take this a step further and so on I think that's that, that's the way it is uh, it really depends yeah. on the student as well to to put on the, all the work yeah really. 
definitely. Um, we don't have long left, but I do have one more question I want to get in just before we finish. Um, so you're doing a masterclass at Planet Drum in the new year. Can you tell us uh, anything about it or what people could expect from the masterclass? Um, yeah. Yes, of course. I'm very excited for that, by the way. It's going to be my first masterclass in London. <laughs> so, yes. yes um, I thought a lot about this and Alan has been helping me out with 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 ideas and all. So the thing is, um, I thought a lot of what drums, you know, what's I think uh, what it what it means for me, like what's most important playing drums for me, how I see the instrument and I see it as a musical tool, really. You know, it's 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 one more musical tool that we have in my in, 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 that, that I have in my hand. So what I thought about doing is just taking it as an approach to creativity because I'm also a creative person. I, 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 I write music, right? I, I'm a music producer. So I'm going to try to take the drums a bit into this universe, you know, and how I, 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 I use this to create my own music, you know, like how I use it to give me ideas uh, with harmony, with melodies, with production, you know, mm. So I'm going to try to do an approach to like a pathway to creativity through drums. Yeah. That's going to be the the talk. That's really interesting because a lot of people think that you have to be like a really good piano player or guitar player in order to sort of compose. But I sort of love that you're coming back, coming like building harmony and everything like that, but starting on the drums. I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we're actually running out of time, but I just want to say thank you so much again for chatting with yeah, us thank today. Thank you very much. Um, I've had a really good time. I feel like we've learned so much about you um, and it's just really interesting to talk to you, really. So I will I'll, um, let you know when this goes up so people can get tickets for your masterclass. But thank you again. Thank you.